Hey, do you ever get lost in thought with what-if questions? I mean, you know, what if I change my job? What if I won the lottery? But if we start asking more global, perhaps less realistic questions. For example, what would happen if I drilled a hole through the earth and jumped in? Wahoo! First of all, heck of a shortcut. Instead of sitting cramped on a plane, traveling over 12,450 miles, you'd have to cover just 7,900 miles. Bora Bora, here I come! You'd also really cut down your travel time. It would only take you 42 minutes to end up on the other side of the planet. But if you're in the US, you better be careful and grab an inflatable raft before you jump through that earth-piercing hole. In a little under a half hour, you'd wind up smack dab in the middle of the Indian Ocean. And if you happen to be hanging out in Chile when this bright idea comes to mind, hooray! You could be chowing down on some authentic Chinese cuisine for lunch. But nobody said your ride would be easy. Don't be expecting no water park slide kind of experience. Although the thought of that kind of makes me giggle, how about you? <laughs> but alas, you'll need to get ready for an obstacle course. First off, depending on where you start drilling, Expect anywhere from 20 to 40 miles of continental crust. Kind of like the inside of a first grader's nose when he has a coal. After that, you'll have to get through almost 2,000 miles of the solid rock of Earth's mantle. Then, you'll be seeing the outer core of liquid iron burning at around 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. FYI, that's as hot as the surface of the Sun. Not to mention this outer core is the size of Mars. Okay, so you've gotten through the outer core. Hey, I've made it so far. <laughs> now you're looking at the solid moon-sized inner core. But you're not done yet, because some experts believe that there's an innermost core that's entirely liquid. And that's it. That's all the layers. Oh, but wait. Uh, what now? You may have reached the center of the Earth, but you still have to go through all those layers again on your way out. Ah, piece of cake. And if you were wondering how on Earth, uh, or in Earth, I should say, you'd be able to cover such a huge distance in just 42 minutes, the answer to that is gravity. As you're sitting right now watching this awesome video, yes it is awesome, man! Gravity is pulling you toward the Earth at a force of about 32 feet per second squared. And that's a good thing. That's why you don't go floating up into the atmosphere. But as you're falling through your imaginary cross-Earth hole, you would speed up by 32 feet for every second of your fall. And this is only if you're not far from the surface. After you're about halfway to the planet's core, you'd be going at a speed of 15,000 miles per hour. And 21 minutes after you jumped inside, you'd pass the center of the Earth at 18,000 miles per hour. So basically, to go through the entire planet in under an hour, you'd need to be going really, really fast. When you reach the other side of the planet, you'd have to make sure there was someone there to catch you. Otherwise, you'd be pulled back into the tunnel you came from. So lucky you if you're jumping through from Chile. Instead of enjoying your Beijing duck for lunch, you'd just be munching on some Chilean ceviche. <laughs> A win-win. As for those jumping through from the States, the odds of someone floating in the Indian Ocean to catch you are slim to none. Sorry. Hey, no problem, man. We're cool. Now, what would happen if the Earth wasn't tilted? You might not know this, or maybe you just forgot since it's just been way too many years into your school days. But our Earth sits on its axis at a 23.5 degree angle. And it's a good thing, too. This is why we have all our seasons. But what if there wasn't a tilt? Well, the Earth would definitely be a completely different place to live. First of all, the Arctic and Antarctic regions would become more pleasant places to live in. The sun would make an appearance every day, and these regions wouldn't be so cold. You wouldn't be able to go sunbathing in the summer or anything as these areas would still be the coldest on the planet, but at least you'd be able to sleep at night without a sleeping mask there wouldn't be midday sun like there is today. Secondly, summer and winter would be a thing of the past. That's why all the traditions and activities connected with these seasons would disappear. Snow could still be found closer to the North and South Poles, 
but most places on the planet would never see it again. Yay! No scraping! Oh, but wait! No more snowmen, snow fights, or snow days. Bummer. Plants would have an absolutely different growth pattern. You know, since the seasons would cease to exist, the poor plants would get completely confused. This would surely influence animals, especially herbivores. What's more, some of them wouldn't feel the need to hibernate in the winter because there would be no winter. Bears would be roaming everywhere. Holy crap. <laughs> well, just kidding. Or maybe. Their mating seasons would change as well. So, would we have more animals? Hmm. Alright. What would happen if the Earth was flat? Sorry to the Flat Earth Society, but your theory just doesn't hold up. If this were the case, we would have some serious problems with gravity. It would work as it should, pulling straight down, but only in the center of the disk. If you were moving away from the center, it would begin to tug more horizontally, and this would be totally insane. Insane. Imagine it. All the water would gather in the center of the world, and the edges would become dry deserts. As for plants and trees, they would grow diagonally. The further from the center they are, the sharper the angle would be. It would become absolutely impossible to play any sport with a ball. What's the point if no matter how well you threw the ball, it would boomerang and come back to the center of the disk planet? So, the next time a coconut falls on the ground near your feet, be grateful that the Earth is spherical. Otherwise, that coconut would probably hit you right in the face. Ouch! Alright, now what would happen if the Earth started spinning faster? Let's start with some facts about the present time. The Earth is spinning really fast, and it spins faster at the equator. For example, the equator is moving at a speed of around 1,037 miles per hour, while Chicago is taking its dear old time at 750 miles an hour. We can't feel any of this, of course, because we're spinning with the planet. Kind of like when you're in the car and you don't feel yourself moving at 65 miles an hour? Same concept, just a way bigger scale. Cool. Let's imagine that the Earth starts to rotate just one mile per hour faster. Seems harmless enough, right? Eh, not entirely. The sea level would rise by just a few inches around the equator because if the planet spins faster around its waistline, some water will migrate there from the poles. However, it would take you a couple of years to notice it. Alright, I think we can live with that. What you'd notice immediately would be some of the satellites going off track. They circle the planet at the speed of the Earth's rotation. So if the planet increased its pace, the satellites would lose their positions. It would lead to at least temporary disruption in TV broadcasting, mobile communication, and even military operations. Whoa, getting a little more serious now. However, things could be much more dire than just these minor discomforts. The faster the planet spun, the more catastrophic the situation would become. For example, you'd lose weight. Hey, I thought you said catastrophic. What could be better than instant weight loss without torturous diets and exercise? Hold on there, not so fast. Even nowadays, if you travel to the equator, instead of your usual 150 pounds, your weight drops to 149 pounds. Why is that? As the equator spins faster, it generates some extra centrifugal force, and this force fights gravity. But just a little bit, though. Enough to boost your self-confidence after you step on the scales. And the faster the planet spins, the lighter you are. If the Earth started spinning at 17,641 miles per hour, you'd become weightless and get flung right off the planet. Uh-oh. If you think that's bad, there would be tons of other catastrophic consequences. First of all, the equator would drown. Also, hurricanes would gain unbelievable force. Along with that, severe earthquakes would shake the planet. Okay, definitely doesn't sound like a place I want to live. And what would happen if the Earth was a cube? Now, a cubic Earth would be a very different planet from the one we live on today. First off, at the center of each face, Gravity would be at its strongest. That's where all the water would collect. Kind of like a flat Earth theory, remember? As for the edges of the planet, they would look like barren, lifeless rocks. There wouldn't be any atmosphere there, as it would be drawn toward the centers of the faces. So, to sum it up, 
we'd live on a planet with a thick atmosphere and giant oceans in the center of the faces, each with its own ecosystem. Alright, what if the Earth had rings? Yes, I've always been so jealous of Saturn and its pretty rings. So what if our planet had them too? Well, they would look different depending on where you were. These rings would most likely go parallel with the equator. So near the equator, you'd see them as thin columns of light disappearing somewhere far in the sky. If you moved away from the equator, the rings would look wider and brighter. They would also reflect sunlight at night. It would seem as if they were glowing in the sky. Sounds like an added bonus for the romantics out there. As a result, there would never be complete darkness on Earth. But during daytime, the level of light would skyrocket. What would happen if the Earth didn't have the moon? First of all, how would Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin have made their legacy? <laughs> Besides that, having no moon would noticeably change our world. The tides would still exist, but they would be much weaker. You wouldn't have a chance to go for a romantic walk in the moonlight. Sorry, romantics. You got your glowing rings on the previous one, but you're losing out on this one. The nights would become much darker, but what's the most important is that the Earth's day would be shorter. It would happen because without the moon, our planet would spin faster. So instead of complaining about never having enough time in the day, you'd be wishing to have at least 24 hours. What would happen if the Earth was two times bigger? If our planet was twice its current size, its gravitational force would be two times stronger. So trees would be thick and tall, and plants stiff and tough. Animals would also be noticeably bigger, more massive, and with thick legs to support their increased weight due to the gravity. Can you imagine your cat all bulked up with Arnold Schwarzenegger legs? <laughs> As for humans, it would depend on the evolutionary demands. They would either become bulky too, or, on the contrary, skinny and light. Fingers crossed for the latter alternative. So, what other what-ifs have you ever considered? Tell us in the comments. Share this video with your friends and remember to give us a thumbs up. Stay on the bright side of life.